network problem. Oh, we have joined another network less uh, and we have lost so much. Ah, wow, that was not good. That was not good. Kai, we had good content, good content that was just dropping. That's why I told you people take note. I hope you took notes of all the things that were shared because those were amazing things that were shared. Let's invite others and come back and try and see what we can do in the next few minutes. Wow, that was just amazing. Network. Uh, So I told you people take note. Oh, we didn't even know that uh, network will be a major issue now, and we we are losing time. But let's um, bring Pastor B back to come and top it up. Wow. Uh, Okay. I hope we learned all the things that were shared. And um, while we're waiting for Pastor B, let me also talk about the book. Let me put the numbers, the website, and the number here again. Wow, he's saying. Pastor B is unable to join. Ah, you have to join. No man of God, we network cannot. We, we are learning so much. Uh, So let me, uh, while we're waiting for Pastor B to join again, to come on board, there are books that have been recommended. Perfect. Ah, welcome back. Oh, this network, oh, hey, can you imagine? All the things we are getting, all those revelations. Kai! <laughs> so well, let's see how we can quickly wrap up. You were sharing with us on capacity building, how to sustain the work and all the stuff. So um, just say more about that so that we can go to the final question on um sustainability yeah so we're talking about so we're talking about how what makes the ministry go so the first thing i said was the place of personal capacity and i said how do you expand personal capacity number one you're, you're expanding it in the place of prayer the second thing is through revelation and information to be informed is to be reformed to be uninformed is to be deformed number three is true association that challenging you. Number four is true mentoring, association that lifting you up. You know, so which are critical. What happens to people is that as they become more successful, people stop growing. That's one of the dangerous things. As you become, they stop growing. And the thing is that you grow from inside. You break through first within before you break through without. The Bible says that you prosper even as you're so prosperous. The outward prosperity is in proportion within the works and the confinement of the soul. The Bible says that remnants of the house of Israel would first take root downwards before they grow upward. So if you're going to grow, so if you are not growing, one of the things you want to ask yourself is this, have I taken root downwards? That's the first thing. You know, that's the first thing. And you will bear fruit upward. The second thing you want to do to grow is this. You know, the second thing you want to do is to be, is to pay attention to the ideas of the holy spirit their emphasis the way we are wired the value each of us will deliver is going to differ from person to person and that's standard the third thing you're going to do to grow the work of god in your hands is that you must learn courage and do without fear mm -hmm. the reason why some people don't grow is that they are too afraid to go to places where god is taking them to the elders of israel couldn't enter the promised land not because it was not there because their capacity to deal with their fear to have courage was very difficult. 
one of the significant things that the Lord told Joshua was this. He said, be that courageous. There are things that God is going to pull you to do. There are many things that we are doing today that took a lot of courage because these are grants nobody has ever done before. It took a lot of courage. And if you're going to grow, you must deal with, you must deal with fear and breakthrough in terms of courage. You know, another thing that will make you grow is management and structures. Management and structures are essential to grow. It's one thing for something to grow. It's another thing for that growth to be sustained. Yeah. Management and structures are vital keys that will make things grow. The Bible says God established the world and by understanding, he established it. He created the world and by understanding, he established it. It's understanding. Understanding talks about structures and processes by which things are what are sustained. Yes, sir. Wow. Wow, that's amazing. If you are joining us, we've been on to, uh, for uh, about an hour now, but we had a network issue, went off and came back again. My name is Olumide Emmanuel. Joining me tonight is Bolaji Do, and we're looking at sustainability secrets that will help you as a minister of the gospel, as a child of God, to stay sustainable. Um, and we recommended some books uh, that can help you. God's General uh, by Robert Lydon, Robert Lydon, part one, part two, part three. Finishing Strong by Steve Farris. Finishing Strong, a good book. And then um, Passing It On, Passing It On by Dr. Miles Monroe. Uh, and then Young Minister's Handbook by Mike Modoc. And um, The Effective Pastor's Wife by Pastor Faith Oyedepo. And The School of Money by Olumide Emmanuel. Uh, so get those materials. If you are not following me on social media, follow me on all my social media platform. And um, we've done this for two weeks now. Yeah, for the past two weeks, this is the last session of this first set. Then next month, we'll bring in other ministers to come and share with us. But because time is gone, let's just wrap this up now. Let's talk about succession. I don't know why we seem to have a lot of problems with succession. I want to hear your view and your take on that. We have a lot of ministries in Nigeria. Um, like I said, I'll be, doing, I'll be 34 years in ministry next month. We have a lot of ministry where when the overseer or the general overseer or the founder dies, then the ministry is over. And today we still have a lot of our frontline fathers that are now in their 80s, in their 70s, in their late 60s, and they are still the only one that we are seeing. And we are wondering when this man goes, what happens to the ministry? So for you as an individual building a work, what do you have to say with reference to succession so that the work that we are building will be there to continue to grow? A church grows not a church grows old naturally, but a church stays young intentionally. Mm. A church grows old naturally, but a church stays young intentionally. The reason mm. why the reason everybody that's a rema, yeah, we'll write it down. It's a rema. <laughs> Go on. So yeah. one, so one of the reasons why um you know what is happening is that not referring to pastor denomination the church the church life in nigeria from inception from apostle babadola to now we've not had in more than 150 years so what has happened is that the history the patterns the patterns for succession in pentecostal mission nigeria has not been formed so what is happening is that a lot of the fathers are losing you know a lot of the fathers know there's problems but they are you know just trying to find their way around the issues. So this is what I think succession should be like. God will raise up an apostolic father that will start doing the work. Then along the side, he's going to decide ahead of that. First of all, I really believe that when it comes to succession, there should be a generational gap. So when you see someone like someone that is 80 years old, hand over to someone that is 70 years old, those successions are not very effective. Yeah. Most of the time, look at the succession that affected by Akida Yomi, handed over to Pastor Deboye. He was just about 30 years old. But Akida Yomi was about 60. There was a large national gap. You know, look at the case of Joel Austin and his father. I'm talking about the one that succeeded. There may be other ones I do not know. So sometimes, so hand over the same generation would be a problem. The reason why is that, you know, if a church is going to grow, the new leader must bring in a new generation. Yeah. And a new generation is going to involve different kind of thinking, different kind of wisdom. So this is what I really think. That it's going to be the apostolic leader that started the work or is the overseer right now. Alongside, he's going to have a pool of generation he's going to join with. Mm -hmm. 
then alongside he must begin to exit the scene while they are coming on the scene he must begin to, to exit so i think the first thing is that the leader is there then they begin to do it together then he begins to walk off the scene and additionally leave them on the scene one of the reasons why the you know i i can't really speak about the fathers because i have so much honor and respect for them you know and until you get to where they are you do not really see why they are doing what they are doing you know i don't know if i answered your question for the minute <laughs> as well we have learned one thing if we didn't learn anything a church grows old naturally but stays young intentionally so in order for any church to continually be sustainable they must be intentional about bringing in the next generation bringing in the next demography to continue to grow and then in succession there must be a gap so that you are not handing over to the people in this in your generation and also that that's amazing so um in wrapping up those of you that are listening to us right now um like i said we have lost a lot of um the part that we did but i'm still going to put this on igtv and also on my um youtube channel so dr olumide emmanuel on youtube all the sessions we have had with pastor Poju, pastor uh, uh, yemi davis pastor godman uh jerry Eze, Pastor K, Jisheson, Tokwe, and everybody, all, they are all there, and I'm going to put this there also. Then for those of you that are businessmen or businesswomen, I have the Business Sustainability Summit coming up Friday, night, Friday the 29th of this month at the Sheraton Hotel. It's a fully residential event, check in on Friday morning, and we leave on Saturday morning. So if you're a business person, that's for you. You can call the number on the screen and find out if we can still have one or two slots for you to join us because registration has closed already. But I think we might be able to accommodate maybe four people, maybe four people. So fully residential. And if you don't want to be resident, there's the non residential part of it. And we're going to be looking at sustainability. I'm going to be sharing on staff recruitment and retention strategy, corporate governance, uh, the job of a CEO. What, as a leader of the organization, what are your own job description? It's going to be an amazing time. And then we're going to have a coaching and mentorship session uh, denied. In the, so take advantage of that. Now, final, final, final. What is your final word for us? And then I want you to pray. I want you to pray for everyone uh, that is joining us, that they will finish well and that they will finish strong. Because we are still on this journey. And at the end of it, all, we want to hear, well done, that good and faithful Sabbath. So let's hear your final word and then pray for us. Awesome. First of all, I want to once again thank you for inviting me to share this with you. All of you that are joining online, all of you that disconnected and came back and joined, thank you for joining. I saw Pastor Kingsley earlier on. I saw you know lots of people you know that joined. And thank you for doing that. Um, this is what I this is what I'm going to say to you. Every time you have a challenge, before you get a solution, get your why. The bigger the why, the more you find answer. The smaller the why, the more you know finances. If your why is big, so the reason why you cannot find answers or you can't find yourself doing it, your why is very small. If your why becomes very big, you'll find yourself breaking through. So get a big why and leave from your why. Get a big why and leave. For example, this is very inconvenient for my servant pastor today. But well, the reason why we're making this sacrifice is our why. There's a why in our heart somewhere. So the why will help you leap over walls. So says, I'm not able to save. You don't have a big why. I've seen people that can't save. When it comes to wedding, the amount of money some women save is phenomenal because now they have a big why. Yes. Some people have not been able to raise three million, one million to do a business. But when there's a surgery and they require seven million, they all of a sudden can get seven million because there's a big why. Yes. So the reason why you find that you can't do what you need to do is because you don't have a strong why. If your why is big enough, you will find yourself doing bigger things. Learn to attempt great things in life and attempt great things for the Lord. Learn to attempt great things for the Lord. Learn to attempt great things for the Lord. Can I go ahead and pray for everyone today? Thank you for the opportunity. I, I want to stretch for my hands and just pray in agreement with you that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, thank you for what you've done. I'm praying that people will come into a deeper place in Christ Jesus. I rebuke every work of the devil. I rebuke every limit of the devil. 
in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, take your hands off their life, take your hands off their money, take your hands off their body, take your hands off their job in Jesus' mighty name. And whatever you desire, I agree with you in faith. Receive in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, let grace be your story. Where effort has failed, where effort could not take you, let grace take you there. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, where there has been hardship, let the hardship turn into ease. Where it has been easy, let the ease get easier for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, move from the back to the front. Move from mitigation to elevation. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I declare that the angels of the Father works for you ceaselessly. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you very Thank you, much. Sir. Stay strong, brother. All right, sir. All right, sir. Let me give you the books again. The books are number one, God's General. God's General, part one to three. God's General is written by Robert Laddon. Robert Laddon. God's General. You can Google it, get part one, part two, part three. When you read those books, you see the story of generals. People that have been used of God for generations, all the amazing things that they have done. So you will realize that there's nothing new under the sun. The second book is Finishing Strong. Finishing Strong by Steve Farah. Steve Farah. Very, very amazing book that will help you to know how that you need to stay strong and keep staying focused on God till the end. The third book is Young Minister's Handbook by Mike Mudok. Young Minister's Handbook. Another amazing book. Young Minister's Handbook by Mike Mudok. And then the fourth book is um, Passing It On by Miles Monroe. Passing It On by Dr. Miles Monroe. Passing It On. Then the fifth book is The uh, Effective Pastor's Wife. The Effective Pastor's Wife by Pastor Faith Oyedepo. The Effective Pastor of by Pastor Faith Oyedepo. And then the next one is School of Money, The School of Money by Olumide Ibano. That's what the book I wrote. It's a book that will teach you how to make, manage, and multiply your money and build you as an entrepreneur. And then if you're not following me on social media, you can click the follow button now and follow me now on Instagram. I do a lot of Instagram live sessions. And then next month, we're going to do another series on sustainability secrets with other pastors and then other ministers of the gospel so that we can learn from them also. And I'm going to post this now on my IGTV and also put it on my YouTube channel. And then if you're a businessman or you're a businesswoman, businessman, businesswoman, and you like to be a part of the Business Sustainability Summit, then call the number. It's coming up on Friday, Friday, the 29th of September at the Sheraton Hotel. It's a full day event for those that want to be a part of the one day event. And then for those that want to be a part of the entire event, it's fully residential. So you come in on Friday and we leave on Saturday. Joining me for that event will be AY, the comedian. He's going to be sharing with us. He's not coming to crack comedy or joke. He's coming to speak as a speaker to share with us on how to build and sustain your personal brand. How to build and sustain your personal brand. And you'll be able to ask him questions and they'll be able to share with you on how you can build your own brand. And then we have Morayo Afolabi Brown um the host of your view on tvc she's also going to be sharing on how you can build a strong media platform how to build and sustain a media platform and then i'll be sharing four sessions i'll be talking to you on doing your job as a business leader to understand your job as a ceo as an entrepreneur what are your own job description and then i'm going to be having a master class on staff recruitment and retention it's a master class that will be an amazing transformational session and then we're going to be i'm going to be talking on corporate governance if you are going to build a company that will be sustainable you can't build it around yourself you have to have corporate governance in place i'm going to be talking to you about corporate governance and i'm also going to be giving you a lot of materials that will help you to be able to stay sustainable as a businessman or businesswoman and then since the fully residential version we're going to be having a mentorship dinner where we're going to have a coaching session. And then in the morning on Saturday, we have an hangout. So anywhere you are in Nigeria, you can travel down for that event and it will be a blessing to you. So call the number on the screen. Uh, go to the website. If you want to buy my books or my material, go to the website and then 
call the number on the screen. You can call the number on WhatsApp. You can chat with the number. If you want to reach out to us to be a blessing to you or assist you in anything you need. So join all of that and um, you'll be blessed as you do. So God bless you all. Have an amazing time wherever you are in the world. Tomorrow morning is church. As you go to church tomorrow, I pray that the blessings of God will rest upon all the services and we'll all experience God in a new way. God bless you all. Um, going to be signing out now. God bless you all. So go to IGTV and go to my YouTube channel, Dr. Olumide Mane on YouTube and see all the videos we have done. God bless you. Bye for now.